Iowa State Penitentiary is located in Fort Madison, Iowa. It's known as the Fort, and it's located in the southeastern part of the state along the banks of the mighty Mississippi River. The Fort was established in 1939, several years before Iowa became a state, and the prison was built by inmate masons with limestone quarried from both sides of the river. For the next 120 plus years, Iowa is a death penalty state and at least 45 men lose their lives on the gallows. Back in the early days, it was all about punishment. It was all about hard labor. But in the 50s and 60s, things started to change. People started to think more about reform. The prison had several programs to help inmates get back on their feet once they were released. Inmates could learn trade skills from Ford Automotive. There was an upholstery shop. They had programs from the University of Iowa. In 1960, Robert Poindexter runs a record-breaking four-minute mile inside the walls. 1965 was probably the best year for Iowa State Penitentiary. Thanks in part to an article published in the prison newsletter, which is largely contributed to by inmates, the death penalty is abolished. The 70s do not bring peace and love to the institution, just the opposite. Inmates become increasingly dissatisfied with the deteriorating conditions of the 130 year old facility. They're also pretty annoyed that they can only get one serving of dessert. In 1972, Captain Joe Kraus is stabbed trying to break up a fight between two inmates. In May of 1981, an inmate named Alan Lewis is stabbed to death. Then in September of that year, things really go south when a small handful of inmates plan a riot. They fashion homemade shotguns out of pipes and someone smuggles in bullets from the outside. They gather up all the shanks they can find and they grab a small group of guards and take them hostage. They also find a group of COs in training and take them hostage as well. They have the new COs trade clothes with them and many of them are beaten. Another group of inmates run across two nurses and a female CO. They take them to the warden's office so they can be smuggled out of the prison safely. Inmates light the institution on fire. They use a tractor inside the walls to pull the door off cell block 20. They also attempted to access cell house 17 where the segregated inmates were kept. The riot lasts less than 12 hours, but it does a million dollars damage to the facility. When law enforcement reclaims the institution, they realize that there's been a casualty. Gary Eugene Tyson is found in a storage unit just off the kitchen. He's been stabbed multiple times and the shank still protrudes from his neck. On a good day, the kitchen can be one of the most dangerous places in the facility. But September 2nd, 1981 was not a good day. Tyson was 31 years old and he was serving two 25 year sentences for burglary. Now back in May, it seemed like Tyson was a member in good standing of the almighty Vice Lords. But by September, conditions had seriously changed. The Vice Lords had come to believe that Tyson had snitched on them for the murder of Alan Lewis. The majority of inmates weren't actively participating in the riot. But while they were busy milling about, Alan Langley, the undisputed honcho of the Vice Lords, called a meeting. He told them to round up Tyson and bring him to the kitchen. Once Tyson's in the kitchen, Langley gives the signal and the gang members descend on him. They wrestle him to the ground and stab him multiple times. Langley eventually receives a life sentence for the murder of Alan Lewis. He receives a second life sentence for the murder of Gary Eugene Tyson. After 175 years in operation, the historic facility is closed and a new Iowa State Penitentiary opens up in Fort Madison.